Good morning everyone. The Global Hunger Index has yet another time slipped India's rank. Last year we were 107th. Now this year we are 111th out of 125 countries. There is something wrong with the methodology. It is being said by the Ministry of Women and Child Development. Even Pakistan is doing better than us. We are falling in the category of serious hunger. What is the Global Hunger Index? Which countries have fared better than us? Which countries have fared worse than us? Also, from the perspective of this examination, specifically prelims, you have to know about the Global Hunger Index, the different parameters, and from the analytical perspective, you have to know what is wrong with the methodology that they are using. Why India is continuously slipping positions? From the perspective of this examination, specifically GS Mains Paper 3rd, you have to keep this in mind. Do not worry about notes because I provide the notes through my Telegram channel, Pooja Devedi UPSC. If you have any queries regarding this examination, feel free to talk to me on my Instagram and follow me on my threads. So, we have been put in a serious category by the Global Hunger Index of 2023. This is the 16th report and we have fallen down again. Last year, 107th. Before that, we were 101st. So, we are continuously performing worse and worse. We have a score of 28.7. Keep one thing in mind that the Global Hunger Index measures the performance of any country on a scale of 100, 0 to 100. Any country that has performed good, as in if they have scored 9.9 .9 or less, the issue of hunger is not serious there. It's low. If any country has performed and scored between the range of 20, to 34.9 it's in a serious category such as india with 28.7 if any country has performed really worse and it's serious or alarming not serious alarming it will get a score of 50 and above so you have to remember these minute details as well because upsc loves to trick us and we have to give it back to the upsc moving on now global hunger index is an annual report which has been brought out almost every year since the year 2000. So remember the year as well. And you have to keep another thing in mind that is it is peer reviewed. Widely, whatever data has been made available to them, they will get access of it. They will review it through different researchers and then they will come out with an index. And this is a jointly published report, jointly published as in concern worldwide along with Red Life Hunger, which is the private organization in Germany, they bring out this report. So sometimes even the smallest of the things you might feel that it is not important for UPSC, UPSC will say, no, no, it's important. You have to know the details as well. So remember the details. Now, I told you that there are certain parameters on which the global hunger index is measured. One such is inadequate food supply. And how do we know that a population of any country has inadequate food supply? If majority of their population is undernourished and this particular category is given a one by third weightage, you have to remember the weightage as well. Then we have child mortality under five. That means children who are not making it to their fifth birthday. Now the problem is that not every time child mortality is due to hunger. This is one of the other problems. But one by third weightage is given to this as well. Then we have wasting. Wasting means, remember, low weight for height. Then we call a person to be wasted. Low weight to height. Then stunting is low height for age. If any child is wasted or any person is wasted, they have height, which is okay, but they have low weight. And if we talk about stunting, Age is supposedly 16, but the child has not grown up to that level. So all these are the important parameters on which global hunger index is measured. Moving on, there are certain countries that have performed really good. If I talk about Belarus, it's approximately five, uh, less than five, we can call it. Bosnia and Herzegovina, less than five. Chile, less than five. These countries have performed good. Croatia, Estonia, Georgia, etc. But India is at 111th position. Only few countries are performing worse than us. Timor, Liste, Mozambique, Afghanistan, Haiti, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Guinea-Bissau, Chad, Niger. The worst performing countries, of course, Yemen, Madagascar, Central African Republic, Burundi and Somalia. 
Moving on, there are certain key highlights also that can be asked in your preliminary examination is this index shows that while some countries have made significant improvements in reducing hunger, little progress is made on a global scale. If we compare it to the year 2015, hunger remains really serious or alarming in at, at least 43 countries. The stagnation is due to COVID-19 and also due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Large demographic groups such as youth, especially who are in the low and middle income countries, are affected disproportionately. The government has a duty to include these sections of the population in order to achieve zero hunger, which is the sustainable development goal number two. These kind of questions could also be asked. Make sure you know them. Now, if we talk about India's specific highlights, India has ranked 111th out of 125 countries. We have a score of 287 falling in the serious category. Pakistan is 102nd, then Bangladesh is 81st, Nepal is 69th and Sri Lanka is 60th. Okay, so there we have fared better than at least South Asia and Africa south of the Sahara. They have a score of 27 each. Moving on, rate of undernourishment is 16.6%. That means most of our population doesn't have access to adequate food. I will also tell you the methodology. Under 5 mortality is 3.1%. Prevalence of anemia in women who are aged between 15 to 24 is 58.1%. In the entire world, we have the highest child wasting rate, 18.7%. But we do have our own tracker, the portion tracker, which was launched in the year 2021 under the portion abhyan itself, tracks the data in accordance with the Anganwadis and it has got the data from at least 13.9 lakh Anganwadis and crores of Anganwadis are involved in putting the data out. So we have our own data. Since April 2023, the measurement data of children under 5 has increased. It was in April 2023, 6.34 crore. Now it's 7.24 crore. So we are measuring it on a larger scale as compared to the global hunger index. The percentage of child wasting has been consistently below 7.2% on a month-to-month -month basis, but here it is 18.7%. So you have to compare these two. What is the problem? Stunting and wasting are outcomes of complex interactions and not only dependent on, uh, you know, hunger. Even the wealthiest of the population can be stunted. In wealthy families, children can be stunted. They can have low height for age. So that's something we have to, of course, seek out when we are talking about the methodology. Now, the problem is the methodology has a lack of transparency. Specifically, if I talk about the parameter on undernourishment, the lack of food supply, it is based upon food and agriculture organization estimate of the data, whatever it takes. And the data, whatever it takes is from Gallup World Poll survey of 3000 households in India and in 1,000 households in certain other countries. So the problem is, we do not know how do these 3,000 households get selected if they are only from a specific state, specific region, pan-India, what kind of people you are representing, all this is actually hidden behind a paywall. You have to pay, then you will get the access of it. And the sample is really small. And this is the problem. When the sample is really small, we start doing cross-national comparison and cross-national comparison will never be equal because certain states, certain uh, nations will have huge population such as India, certain other will have a smaller population. So on what basis this sampling is done, we do not know. Other problem is, yes, that is based on undernourishment part one. It is based on Gallup World's poll survey. This is one problem, lack of transparency. Second problem is the under five mortality rate prevalence of stunting and wasting. It is from our own National Family Health Survey, that is fine. But the problem is how you are actually relating stunting, wasting and mortality under 5 with hunger. Because proportion under nourishment and child mortality, they contribute 1.3 to index, which is huge. Also stunting and wasting is 1 by 6. And they are partially related to hunger. Child mortality actually depends upon country's global disease burden as well as what is the climate. If you have to know, then 40 of 1000 children in India die before their 5th birthday and 27 of these deaths occur in the first month of their birth. And this can be due to complications in delivery or some other problems, congenital diseases as well. They are not actually related to 
hunger only so how can you relate it other problem is the relationship between stunting and wasting to hunger is not adequate it is not proportional because even in unicef's article stop stunting this is the unicef's article why do i keep on telling you all this because whenever you are going to write a mains examination you have to mention which article we are talking about so this is unicef's remember unicef's article it has been said that poverty is not a clear cause of stunting even the wealthiest of the families have seen the reports of stunting infant and child care practices what the hygiene was dietary diversity cultural practices everything also depends maternal health is also on that only and wasting is associated with both recent illness if a child has gone through recent illness and low food intake but is not only related to hunger supposedly if child is going if a child is going through diarrhea they will definitely eat less so it, illness can be one thing but not only hunger now india has launched certain programs in order to tackle the hunger issue we have the eat right movement eat right india movement this movement wants to nudge the population of india to eat healthy things and not junk food and it has been done by the food safety and standards authority of india second is poshan abhiyan which is launched by the ministry of women and child development in 2018 to raise awareness about nutrition and importance of food and reduce stunting under nutrition anemia among young children women and adults and girls next we have pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana taking care of the mother means taking care of the child this has been in effect from 1st january 2017 it's a central sponsored scheme that means the share of the funding will be done between the center and the state okay ministry of women and child development takes care of it it's a maternity benefit program then we have food fortification as well one is hunger that we can feel one is hunger that we may not feel exactly but our body lacks it such as proper vitamins minerals so when we fortify foods when we mix our foods with certain uh, minerals and vitamins such as iron iodine zinc vitamin a and d to staple foods such as uh, salt and uh, sometimes even rice all this will also help us in getting rid of hidden hunger national food security act of 2013 has targeted a population of 75% in the rural area and 50% of the urban area to get staple food and uh, subsidized food and this is mandatory in nature so how can one say that india lacks you know proper food security so this is something we have to take care of methodology is important mission indra dhanush is for children under 2 years of age and pregnant women for immunization against 12 vaccine preventable diseases so stunting and wasting can be related to illness this has also been taken care of we have integrated child development services scheme which provides a package of six services such as supplementary nutrition preschool and non formal education nutrition and health education immunization health checkups for children between 0 to 6 years pregnant women and even lactating mothers now this is a prelims question that you have to answer portion tracker was launched in which of the following years the numbers are given uh, the options are given let me take the names of those students who have answered my last question correctly okay stay with me for a moment yes i asked a question on india Mid middle east economic corridor of course europe economic corridor and ibrahim accords are dead so riya has answered it correctly very good sandhya simran thank you so much swesh swesh rupani uh priya darshan mansi mandeep and devi thank you so much for answering the last question answer this as well i will announce your names in the upcoming class thank you